So what we're looking at now is in your Next Level Radio textbook on page 304 is where we're starting today. So yesterday we just started speaking about, uh, we also spoke about air checking and snooping and coaching a little bit. Um, so now we need to look at how we break it down. You might remember going through something similar in your second year. Um, not sure though, but in essence what it is is Valerie Geller broke has nine themes. So um, every theme has a different concern that you need to be aware of. And the best practice is to meet with your presenter or your team in order to decide on a theme or a piece of audio that you would like to snoop. OK, so we're talking about feedback, snoop sessions and how you would go about it. Um, so we listen to the audio, um, ask you questions about the themes, critique the audio. And then together we start talking about where we are at, OK, where you are at as a show taking into consideration all the basic rules that we have spoken about, we can use the following findings to coach and to improve you as a presenter on air or digital, wherever it is that uh, you are broadcasting from. So those nine are interactions, memorable moments, recycling content, breaky construction, show prep, relatability, show structure, imaging, and individual performance. Um, so your individual performance. We break it down and we start with your listeners, or rather your interactions overall, including with your listeners. So listener interactions are measured by how active your listeners are with you. So both inside and outside of the studio and inside and outside of your show times. Um, when you're broadcasting, broadcasting things like phone calls, your texts, uh, WhatsApp voice notes, WhatsApp tweets, etc., are used to contribute to the show as the show progresses. Social media and website polls facilitate longer term interactions that you can use to tie into different parts of your show or different shows um, across a week, for instance, if you have a five day week show. So, for instance, you can ask um, for listeners to vote for something via Twitter or Instagram um, to pick their favorite artist of the 2000s. Uh, and after the polling period, you can perhaps play a song. OK, with regards to the uh, song that received the most votes. Um, in any interaction, you should make it easy for your listener in order to be able to participate with you. So when you're inviting your audiences to participate, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind, which starts with um, the invitation that should be played at an appropriate time, like during a break or where listeners have time to prepare themselves before the interaction begins. So you're doing a throw forward in essence also. Um, invitations need to be clear and easy to follow, so easy instructions, um, where you give phone numbers or Twitter, hand Twitter handles, and these things you will repeat again at the end of your segment um, at a reasonable pace so that they can follow along if they don't have the details. And you need to think about different ways of elicit eliciting responses from your listeners, rather always than simply asking them to phone in or to WhatsApp in. Okay. There needs to be multiple platforms that they can perhaps get a hold of you on because not everyone can always phone specifically. When you're managing listener participation, you need to remember that not all listeners are the same. So we're talking to one specific type of listener, but that can be broken down into many different listeners with different uh, interests, etc. So there are various elements of participation that you need to address. So, for instance, um, you should begin each caller's uh, participation segment in a consistent way. Okay? Consistency is important so that listeners become familiar with the way in which things work. Um, and before you put a caller on air, the studio should do some form of a screening. OK, like I've told you before, to limit things like prank and um, swearing on air or poor telephone lines that are difficult, um, and also that this person actually has something to say on the air, okay? Um, and you address them by name when you're speaking to them on air, so you know who it is that's going to be on air. So um, 
let's say I know Paul is going to be on air because I off air they were screened. I go, Paul, are you there? And then, you know, they will get on air. Um, you can start with a quick hook with your conversation, okay, to go, let it go into the correct direction, which will often be a quick reminder of your topic before the caller is asked to provide their opinion. Um, so the callers you allow on air should represent your general listenership so that the answers provided will resonate with other listeners as well not just someone uh, not just one person's opinion they need to be someone who's energetic and engaged okay in the content or the segment um to spark a little bit of interest in your listeners okay it's really difficult if you get someone on air who is boring as a listener uh, as a presenter because then you need to try and make up for that passion okay so engagement is also really important on social media. Um, lots of different ways you can do that. You can read responses from what you've received via tweets or Facebook posts, or you can collect those WhatsApp voice notes and play them out on air. Listeners love that because then they can hear their voices live on air. Um, and you do all of this just with regards to your time. So you need to take your timing into account. Make sure that everything will fit in with your time. That's why prep is so important here. Then the second thing that you look at when you're snooping is memorable moments. So it's moments that will make your listener come back to your show. Um, the kind of moments that get people talking about what a great show it was and that generate word of mouth type of content. So something that will interest me that I will go and talk to my friends about, right? Um, and that can only happen if your moment is truly a memorable moment. So it's important to be critical of this. So asking questions like, for instance, is this really the kind of content that people would share or talk, uh, talk about, for instance? If not, what could I have done to enhance this moment and to generate more word of mouth uh, advertising for the show and to have people talking about my show what would have made the audio easier to talk about okay so what could I have done differently in essence so when you're preparing your content it's vital that you look for the what else angle to see what else you can bring in um so again, think about the crystal. A crystal has a lot of different sides to it, okay? So each side, if I turn it in the sun, um, will have the light shining off it from different sides of this thing. That's different angles to a story. There's always other angles to be found, right? Uh, what else could be done with the content to make it more enjoyable or more memorable and shareable? Um, so this means that your links need to be concise and focused and they they need to have an emotional connection so fubby like are you utilizing fubby still in your content um it could be suspenseful or be dramatic okay you could have catch phrases within them that's easy to remember um and they may need repackaging and replaying as a marketing strategy afterwards. So concise and focused, what does that mean? It means that your links are measure, measured in essence for the essence of this link. What did you try and say in this link and did you pull it off, yay or nay? Um, does the essence come through strongly? Our listeners, after listening to a link, can a listener uh, recite the essence of the link to friends and family. Can I, after I am listening to one of your links, okay, after a snoop session, listening to a link, tell you um, on my own without you having to give me input what this link was about, what the essence of this link was? Um, your link needs to have this em uh, emotional connection. So it has to strive to be funny or uh, useful or bold or beautiful or inspiring okay building suspense and ensuring that links and stories are dramatic can ramp up the entertainment value of them okay um and the involvement the participation from your audience's side which is something you need uh, so you want to produce radio that listeners would actually stay in their car to listen for that i would sit down um without getting out even though i know i'm late because i want to finish hearing what you're saying first 
Then catchphrases and branding can also help a station's brand to stay in the forefront of uh, listeners' minds. So catch some catchphrases are so memorable that it also become it almost becomes like a brand on their own, like a feature does. Um, and it makes it easier to share with people. Um, and also when I hear it, then then I'll know exactly what it is that you're referring to. Okay. Um, so from a marketing strategy, it's important that these memorable moments need to be repackaged for social media, for podcasts, um, perhaps YouTube, whatever it is. And if people come across your content, will they share the content on their own social media platforms? Is it that strong? Okay, is it strong enough, in other words? Number three, recycling ties in here a little bit. Recycling content means re-performing your base content creatively. Replaying great features or breaks in different hours or quarter hours for maximum exposure. Think about the three types of promotions that we get. This falls in there. Uh, repackaging great moments on air and applying those elements creatively in a different context and uh, repurposing content and exposing it to a broader audience on multiple platforms. So reusing your content via the internet, social media, digital platforms. For any show, it's important to consider whether a listener um, is getting to hear your best content. content. That they hear that memorable piece. Okay, uh, you only really need three outstanding pieces of content a day, and they can be reused, repurposed, repackaged to ensure that you can have as many listeners as possible hear them. But that's still three memorable pieces of content. Ask yourself in your last show that you've done, did you have any memorable content pieces that you would? repurpose that you would want to repurpose because you think you're proud of it you think it's that good okay you should be able to um when bits are re-performed we have to keep in mind the context in which we are performing it again and if we are um replaying it then we need to do it at different intervals during the day so different shows different hours um perhaps even different days okay so repurposing content means that um, we are using content in production and imaging. So as as, uh, as imaging in essence, okay, not uh, as a promo in the sense of a promo, but as a promo in the sense of imaging. It may even involve using the content to create promotions for your show and to package content so that other presenters can use it in their shows if there's a gap where they don't have much happening. Number four, break construction. I always get asked what that means. So there are four specific elements of a break that you need to evaluate. So you need to evaluate within your construction, um, break up the hook, the crumbs, the payoff, and your blackout. Okay, break construction. Um, what are you doing to break up the content so that uh, I can have a look at them and make sure that you are utilizing storytelling elements? So. Your hook needs to be within the first few seconds of your link. It has to be there. It has to be captivating. It needs to leave me as a listener intrigued. It needs to leave me excited about your show. Um, you need to hook me as your listener and draw me in to engage with your link. Your middle part of your story or the crumbs um, need to be rewarding for me as a listener, okay? I need to get something out of it. There needs to be little mini payoffs, okay? Every 30 to 40 seconds. And the crumbs should have a couple of twists and turns. So you start with the trouble. Um, so you introduce the characters to me. Then you do your setup where whatever happens is happening. Then there's a, a second piece of conflict that comes in. Um, that twists and turns into another direction, and then you have a payoff, okay? So it's vital to have a clear and a defined plan and a destination for your link. You need to know where you are going when you get in a car and start driving. You don't just drive aimlessly around. You have ways or maps, Google Maps or whatever on, showing you your end destination. You know where you are heading before you start driving. Okay, so it's vital that you know where you are going with this link. Don't just start talking and just off the cuff 
fly all around because that's when we get these long unstructured links. Okay, prep, 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 super important. Um, your payoff, is it rewarding to me as a listener? Um, are you giving me what I've been listening to? Uh, um, are you giving me this moment? The reason why I was listening up until this point is for your payoff line. Um, are you now giving me that emotional response that I want? Um, Am I taking some, something of value from this? Then the blackout. This is the end of your link and um, should follow your payoff almost immediately. Okay. When we are critiquing links, um, try to remember whether the payoff is introduced or rather the black off, a blackout is introduced at the correct time. So it shouldn't occur so early that the payoff is missed. It needs to be right after your payoff, but it shouldn't be too long after your payoff because then this link seems too long. There's a point where you go, oh man, they should have cut it right there. Um, and presenters struggle with that. They struggle uh, with the when to get out of that link. Okay. And that is really where prep comes in. But that's like, that's not only, for instance, um, you as a um, presenter still learning. That's even when I listen to the Radio Awards content, there are even some of those content pieces that get submitted for an award that I go, oh, should have gone out of this earlier. Okay. So when I'm snooping or when we're snooping to for this specific section, the break construction, it's essential that we pay attention to how the characters or the presenters uh, react to surprises in the execution. Uh, remember, this is a show you're putting on. This is your character. Your actual character map needs to be seen in this approach. I need to be able to see who you are as a character through listening to your links. Um, so are you as a presenting ignoring the distractions and getting back on track? Or are you allowing distractions to cause um, this specific moment or link to fall apart because you're going down the rabbit hole and you're just confusing me as a listener? Or are you enthusiastically embracing the, the distraction and turning it into your um, part of your planned link um, about what you're talking on air? Okay. It's a good idea also to listen to the teasers and the throw forwards. Um, for me, these are really important. Okay. Your teasers, your throw forwards, are important um, because your teasers are promised to your listener that something great, something of value is coming up and that they should be looking forward to hearing this piece of content. Um, so you need to make sure that your tease is impactful once again by laying out the emotion that listeners could experience. What can I hear when I'm listening into this moment? How are you going to make me feel? Okay. Um, is it funny? If it's funny, you give me a bit of humor. If it's intriguing, you show me that. Okay. If it's suspenseful, you give me a little bit of that. Um, because this is what will keep me listening, okay? Listening out to your next link. You can even do a cliffhanger here if you're busy with a story arc. Um, if you're continuing your, your story, so your construction is continuing over more than one link. Show prep. So show prep, so important. When preparing for a show, you need to consider the entire preparation process from prep sourcing to performance. Context is just as important as content, okay, as your delivery is. So content is king, context is queen, but your performance helps make or break this content. If you're just going to be rambling off the stuff for me like this, like everything has a different concerns, no one's going to be listening because you're not giving me a performance to listen to, right? Um, so I start by looking at your prep itself here, um, which is really important on its own. Um, and then I check how you've used it, whether you've used it to guide you throughout your show. Um, everyone needs to be involved in this process. So all three members of your team needs to be involved for, through finding and generating the content to curating the content to the actual performance of this content. So crucial points to remember, do not rip and read. 
In other words, do not simply pick up a piece of content and start to present it without knowing what you are reading beforehand. Okay. Be prepared with the fam and be familiar with the kind of content and with your content that you are talking about. Um, you need to curate this content to suit the show and the specific station or the podcast, but more importantly for me, you as a presenter. So remember the RIP formula, research, internalize, perform. You take your content, you make it your own, and then you put it out on air and you perform it. Um, explore different possible angles for this content or something unique for your show for that day. Each to topic has to be brainstormed and every piece should be followed with the question, what else can I do? How can I make it bigger? How can I make it talkable? Uh, create word of mouth content from this segment. So when um, critiquing show prep, we, I'm looking at the different details of your break construction, so aka your storytelling, and ensuring that your hook, your crumbs, your payoffs, your blackouts are executed as were planned, as you planned them on your show prep. Um, and then each segment needs to be clear regarding your direction that has, um, at, and it needs to have a potential end point on your prep so that I can see again where you were headed with this thing you were talking about. Whew. Then number seven there, your show structure. Again, super, super important. So when I'm listening to your show structure, um, I need to listen to your show from start to end. Um, and it's important to write down notes then when you're listening, okay? So when doing this, you need to focus on a couple of specific elements, which is your show flow, your consistency, your characterization, your service elements, your music, and your promoting and teasing. So I need to sit and listen to your whole thing beginning to end and listen to these specific points, okay? Um, so you should also do this, like, on your own. It's good to listen to a whole show from beginning to end to hear where you're sitting in terms of all of these different points before handing in your final show to me. So the show flow from one segment to the next, it, well, it's a great flow. Uh, it shouldn't feel like a collection of separate unrelated links. Um, you shouldn't be left confused. Rather, um, you, you should be able to see how everything makes sense and fits in. Um, the show should progress at the correct pace. It shouldn't get bogged down or move on too quickly. Content should be regularly reset. What does that mean? It means if I've just tuned in now, I had no idea what you were talking about in your previous link. So you reset the content. You say, um, in case you missed it, we are talking to Professor So-and-so from So-and-so, who is giving us insights into what's happening in the BRICS uh, on the last day today, whatever. Okay, So I've reset the premise of my link before I get back into it. Because as a listener, if I just tune in and you just continue talking, I'm going to be lost. I'm not going to know what you are talking about. It's going to sound like an inside piece of conversation where I feel out, left out. Consistency, not only in a day-to-day -day sense, but also moment-to-moment, -moment, okay? Should live up to the value proposition of your show. What is your value proposition? What do I, what am I getting out of your show every time I listen to it, okay? Um, it needs to contain moments that entertains, that teaches listeners something, that inspires me, that makes listeners feel part of a community, feeling relatable and display empathy. Empathy, something you can learn if you don't have it, but you need to display it. Characterization, so every show needs to teach me something about you as the presenter and your character. Uh, the content needs to reflect your character map okay, of your show. Um, the service elements need to provide enough information that is useful and memorable, like, for instance, your news and sport and weather and traffic. And it needs to be helpful, and it should also be performed with enthusiasm um, so that I don't think that you are bored reading these elements. Music, all songs that are playlisted should play in the order that they are playlisted in. The songs should add the entertainment value and not get in the way of your content. But moreover, all the songs um, should be hits. I'm not focusing so much on that because your songs are on the system. 
Um, promoting and teasing. So making content promises. You're doing throw forwards, okay? Teasing and promoting, um, and this should happen every quarter hour, okay? It should be good enough to drive appointment listening. So are you doing throw forwards to what is coming up, to what the next content piece will be? Are you trying to drive my appointment listening to get me to stay listening to you as a show? Then number eight, imaging. So radio is the show of, or <laughs> radio is show business, right? This is showbiz overall, and it needs to sound like it. Um, this doesn't mean that all shows need to have like, bells and whistles everywhere across the board, but the imaging and production should frame your characters and personalities effectively, okay? Imaging is not only about telling listeners what they're listening to, but it's about enhancing your listening experience. Again, think about everything that you listen to, all content pieces, audio pieces, uh, even things on TV. They are always... Uh, audio pieces within there, not necessarily music, but different types of audio pieces that are being used to enhance the audio, okay, to enhance your content. Not simply referring to a music bed, referring to um, different types of sounds and things to bring out this listening experience of mine. So red flags to look out for and to avoid include imaging that overpowers presenters and sounds too overhyped. Uh, that's too loud, overpowers your content, does not add momentum, or does not add to the storytelling or the suspense or the drama of your show. Right. So um, technically, you should be analyzing the production pieces separately. And then number nine, there, your individual performance. So here in this theme, we will um, listen to one person exclusively uh, in your link, okay? So in this specific link, I will only listen to one voice out of the three, only listen to how you uh, responded and how you did things. Um, and this is a one-on-one -on -one session. So this won't be a group session, this will be one-on-one -on -one, um, where we review every detail of your performance, um, your participation, uh, your voice, how much you are sharing or should be sharing, um, how much value do you add to the link? Do you move the link forward or are you slowing this link down? Um, are you derailing the conversation or, or are you actually contributing to the overall conversation in a focused manner? Okay. Are you performing your character consistently? So am I seeing your personality completely or do I not get an idea of who you are? If you look at page 310 in your textbook, it starts there with a breakdown of interactions and it gives you a list of questions. So for instance, listener interactions, are listeners active? Are they calling you? Are they texting or engaging with you on social media? Or are they responding to you in any way? Is the invitation provided at the proposed time, the proper time? Are you giving out your phone number in a slow enough manner that I can hear it? Is it clear? Is there a better way to solicit responses? And then managing listener participation. When listeners are on air, do they sound interested and engaged? Are they screened before you put them on air? Does each call start quickly with a fast hook? Does each caller sound like your target audience? Do they add value to the content? Or are you only trying to fill time? How do you get into calls? Are you consistent? Are you welcoming? Um, do you address them by name? Do you take calls live or record them and use them a later time? Why, if you do it like that? If you record calls, are they edited properly? Are your recorded calls edited too tightly? Do you end calls at the right time or are listeners allowed to drag on and on and on? Do you control the conversation during the call? And then it goes on to talk about how you're engaging with them on social media. Then there's memorable content. So in essence, what you are doing is you are finding the moment that you think are the best is the best moment of that day's show. And then we use that um, specific material to snoop on. And then you can read through those. The same with recycling. Um, we look at where you've recycled content, how it's been done in all the different manners of it. Break construction. So 
uh, we look at the four um, different areas separately, hook, crumbs, payoff, and blackout. Are you building your momentum? Are you paying um, attention to how presenters react uh, while you're talking? If listeners tuned in during the break, in this case, this break means link, okay, segment. Would they be captivated? Would it grab their attention? Would they get confused? Is there clear, defined, different destination, etc.? And then on your show prep, from prep sources to performance, it starts with where does your material come from? Where do you get it? Uh, who is responsible for contributing to the content and gathering information? Do you have enough background notes, uh, information, and facts? Um, how is this curated, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. The creative process. Um, is the preparation process thorough enough to discover the most interesting aspects of your topic? Should we review or change brainstorming techniques in our creative sessions? Were the angles of each topic explored to discover something unique for the show on this day? Is there too much information? Does it sound like the show is performing for the uh, prep materials rather than making the prep work for their show? So is the talent over prepared to the extent that you're not using emotional uh, or emotions for nuances, etc. cetera. Um, does everyone involved in the show participate in the pr preparation purpose um, and process? Who's not engaging or participating? How can they become more involved? Um, do you use a daily roadmap, which you should be, by the way? Who creates it, updates it, ensure that it's ready? How is it working for you? What should be tweaked? Air check, show prep details. So here we look again at your hook, your tease, your payoff, and your blackout. Um, how many entry points did you consider before choosing the best one? In hindsight, what would have been better alternatives for you to use? Uh, what was the planned exit? Did you know how it was intended to end? And did it end the way that you expected? If not, why not? Then relatable. Um, are you making each topic stand out somehow? Um, how can we update the show prep process in order to improve relatable connections in the future? Okay. When we present a topic on a show, how is it unique? What are what about breaks um, in, um, enhances the listener's experience? Again, in these case, breaks are referring to links. Do listeners see themselves in your content? Is it personal, is the connection or a viewpoint? And then your show structure, you can read through that, your imaging, and then lastly, your individual performance. So do you as an individual participate in the show consistently, regularly, or do you sometimes disappear for long periods of time and then suddenly pop up and overwhelm the show? Uh, do you contribute to breaks and move topics forward? Are there moments where they try and fail? Where could... Uh, what could be adjusted and to improve your performance? Do you, does your voice come through, through suitably? Are you comfortable during the performance? Is there inflection in delivery? Are you talking too loudly or too softly or softly um, or too quickly or too slowly? Is there a lo enough laughter, too much laughter? Are there cliches? Are there crutches? Are there any habits that need to be corrected? Um, and then when you're performing your character, is your performance within your char character brand profile? Do you step outside of it in, at all? If so, what, when and how? Um, how do you get back on track if you have moved outside of that? Is there a pattern that takes you off course? Um, how can we uh, correct this pattern and make sure it doesn't happen again? Are you projecting your personality or character with individuality and flair? Uh, do you react to what your partner is saying or do they sound like they're obnoxious when they're talking or ignore what is being said? Okay, so that is the nine theme approach. So interactions, your memorable content. How are you recycling if you are recycling content? Uh, break construction, so your storytelling, your show prep, your relatability, your show structure, imaging and individual performance. Any questions here? No, ma'am. Right. Oh, ma'am, actually, wait, I do have a question, ma'am. I wanted to ask, um, are we going to get individual feedback only at the end once we've submitted or like um, at a smooth session? 
at a snoop session they um so i'm start i'm actually starting with um individual feedback with some shows tomorrow and the rest of them next week friday oh okay ma'am noted okay. hi ma'am hello um it's Ita here so i've been listening to you using Amos phone because mine was giving me problems. I just want to ask a question with regards to um can you please go back to individual performance? I'm sorry about that. I'm I'm gonna miss it out. What about individual performance? Can you please touch on it for a, for a bit? Oh you want me to, to oh to touch on it again. Oh, yes. Okay. So in essence, what I'm doing is I'm isolating you as a presenter um, separately from the other presenters. So I'm listening to you and only your content. OK, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. We're focusing on you. Um, so we are going to be doing individual Snoop sessions. Um, so we'll be doing show Snoop sessions and then individual Snoop sessions. OK, so here I, um, I isolate you as a character. You need to be able to tell me who you are as a character, how your characteristics are defined. Um, then I'm going to listen to whether you are participating consistently and regularly on your show. Um, are you contributing to storytelling and to help move topics forward? Are there moments where you try but fail? Um, what could be adjusted to improve your overall performance? Um, is there inflection in your delivery? So are you delivering it in such a way that you are performing, okay, using your voice? Um, are you talking too loudly or softly or quickly or slowly? Uh, are you easy to understand? Do you have a clear point of view? Are you using cliches or crutches? And do you have any habits that need to be corrected? Then are you using, are you performing your specific character profile? Can I see your character come through in the show with regards to the profile that I will have of you? Uh, Hi, ma'am. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to continue where we were. Uh, well, I have uh, recorded it, so you will also be able to get the recording and listen to the rest. OK, thank you. Okay. So then lastly, with regards to your performance, your individual performance, are you predicting your personality or character with individuality? And are you reacting to what your partners are saying on air, your co-presenters? Um, or do you sound like you are anxious uh, about what you're talking about or are you ignoring what is being said? Okay, so that is the individual um, Snoop Sessions part of it. Okay, ma'am, thank you so much. All right. So then we get to what we refer to as the important half dozen. So we split these from the um, nine theme approach. So the nine themes are normally used independently, okay? Um, and one theme, one snoop session rule is typically applied. So we focus on one of the nine themes, typically per snooping session. However, um, there are six themes that we can look at um, all at once during one snoop session. Okay, especially seeing as we're only snooping snoop, well, doing snoop sessions once a week. And that is your music, your content, your multi platforms, basics, performance, imaging, and money matters. So, first and foremost, um, I'm not looking at things like um, music and um, multi-platform too intense, okay? Um, what I am looking at though is, did you play all the music that was playlisted uh, uh, within your clock's time? So the amount of songs that should be there. Did you get through all the music in that hour? Was the tempo correct? So that I'm not going to look at in too much detail. Is the clock structured correct correctly that I am looking at? Was music used correctly? Eh, not so much for me to look at, but just so that you know questions that could be asked. Um, content. Was your content relevant? Was it relatable? Did you tell great stories? Uh, did the stories have a premise, a change, gloom, aka another 
conflict situation and then a resolution to them where they hooks, crumbs, payoffs and blackouts that were used or executed well. Were interactions with callers valuable? Did the content pro provide the water cooler effect? So is there something that I can go and talk to a friend about? OK, like a did you know kind of a mo moment. Were they throw forwards and teasing and were they well executed? So did you promise me something of value will be coming up? Multi-platform content, I'm not going to snoop you on, obviously. Were all of the multi-platforms available used to tell on their stories more comprehensively and was videos used? The basics, are you providing service elements that the audience need and expects uh, to hear from you? Are the elements too long or too short? Do you perform these elements with enthusiasm every time or are you simply going through the motions? Evaluate traffic, uh, weather, news, promotions, advertising breaks, etc. Do you embrace and promote them appropriately? Are you making them come alive? Are you performing these pieces as quickly as possible or are you dragging them out with a lot of waffling? That's unnecessary. Uh, then your actual performance. Are you presenting with great enthusiasm and energy? Are you performing to your character and the character maps created? Are you being authentic? Are you being who you are? Um, does the team have good chemistry? So can they work well together? Are you talking to the listeners or um, are you having an in-studio conversation, which means me as the listener are left out um, of your conversation because you're talking amongst each other and not to me? And then has imaging been used effectively and was the commercial content entertaining? Uh, not worrying too much about that for you. Okay. So that is the um the half dozen okay the important half dozen then from this we get to geller's key principles okay which is the last thing we're focusing on today are these key principles so um there's a table and this questions is a checklist that valerie geller uh, uses in order to assess whether the radio she's listening to is powerful or not so the checklist is split according to responsibilities of the presenter and the story that they tell. So from a presenter point of view, are you speaking, not reading? Are you using visual metaphors to create the story that you are telling? Are you passionate, fun, humorous? Do you sound like you want to be on air? Um, are you a character that I can actually picture in my mind? Are you taking me on a journey? Are you personal without revealing too much about your private life? Um, would you be fun to spend time with off air? Uh, do you serve the listener to ensure that you are entertaining them, informing them, inspiring them, persuading and connecting with them? And are you in control of the show as a presenter? Right. Then it comes to the actual story that you are busy telling. Uh, so this is the story conversational and does it make a connection with me as a listener on a personal level? Um, are the stories transitions smooth and seamless and um, they don't act like walls between segments? So is the story engaging, entertaining, powerful, creative? Um, is it applicable to your life, whether in health, emotions or money. Um, the story has an interesting topic that the listener would want to discuss off air with other people. The story presents unique information that listeners would not hear elsewhere. The story does not go on longer than necessary. The story takes some risks and surprises the audience. And the story is interesting enough for the audience not to worry about the time, about how long this thing is. So these are the key checklists that Valerie Giller uses when she listens to um, segments in Snoop sessions, okay? So what are the basic, basic air check rules then? Always work from the audio of uh, the, um, the show that we are discussing. So we always use audio from your last show. 
Focus on one thing at a time. So one big thing at a time. Tell the truth. Reinforce the positive by starting with the good stuff. Be fair. Uh, because criticism goes in very deep. We are aware of that one. Let the talent discover along with you what needs to be improved. Outline their strengths. Have faith in them. Close with achievable goals. And then listen to whether there are promo potentials, yes or no. Okay, Are there things that we can use as a promotion or not? Um, so we're not going to go on to this right now. Well, on to um, your next level radio, uh, uh, Valerie Gillis textbook right now. I just want to mention these points to you. So mistakes occur when an air check session is mishandled. And if I go in guns blazing, telling you this and this and this and this is what I want, we are not going to have good communication. Okay. Um, we need to talk together in an air check session. Um, and listen to each other and communicate in such a way that we feel like we are interacting and working together because there are multiple ways that HX can be messed up. Okay, so here are the top 10 complaints from talent about what they feel is wrong with the traditional HX. Firstly, there are no HX or too few HX, uh, contradictory or inconsistent input. So one week we say one thing, the following week we say something completely different. Lack of praise for progress, only negative feedback, lack of how to's and creative input, vague input without specific examples to help you um, move forward, autocratic edicts without rationale to support or explain them. So it's my way or the highway. Perceived personal attacks, criticism from a higher authority delivered as though it came from the program manager or the program manager uh, who critiques them um, isn't critiquing honestly, is critiquing them un, um, dishonestly. Okay. So lots and lots of focus on um, the air check sessions, okay, with regards to um, the snoop sessions. Um, so these are the things I've run through you quite a few times before, and I have mentioned them all to you before. But from here on forward, this is what I want you to take into consideration. When we start snooping sessions from tomorrow onwards, I am going to be listening in these terms. So the first couple of weeks, we focus on very basic things. Okay? We haven't really started focusing on any of this stuff. Um, we focus on things like your hooks and your payoffs um, and throw forwards, um, that kind of things. Now we're going to start looking at, uh, well, and we, we always look at whether you're talking to one person, though. But now I'm going to start looking at visual language, um, fubby, use of fubby, um, engagement, relatability, uh, talkability off air characterization are you as a character coming through um storytelling are you taking me on a journey okay new information personal are you being personal okay um do you sound like you could be fun off air and interesting and enjoyable would i want to spend time with you off air does it feel too long is it dragging by and were you as a host whoever the host is in control of your show Okay, so that's where we're ending this off today. I will see you tomorrow. Remember to let me know if you have a specific time tomorrow that you'd like me to do the Snoop sessions with you. Otherwise, I'm just going to send out a schedule saying who is in what half an hour or 40 minutes. Tomorrow will be a little bit longer time slots. So then I shall see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, ma'am.